Hello, I'm Calvin Morris and this is my review of Doctor Who Series 8, Episode 3, Robot of Sherwood. Without any further ado, let's review Doctor Who. So this episode centred around the fact that the Doctor was meeting a character from British folklore. That he was taking what is legend and myth and turning it into a believable person, into, a, into somebody that actually existed. Uh, I have no problem with that. Uh, I thought it was a good idea. I thought it was really clever the way that they tried to make Robin Hood uh, somebody who was a real person but forgotten and then worked into legend and myth. and is now regarded as something of a fantasy. I, I like that a lot. I, I really thought that was a really clever way of approaching it. Um, they put a twist on the story so that rather than it just being about Robin Hood and the Doctor and the Sherwood Forest and all that scenario, they added robots in there to give it some sort of sci-fi element. The robots in the story was part of a reused plot again, unfortunately, that they didn't have the parts, that the ship was broken and they didn't have the parts and they were trying to fix it. They can't re keep reusing this plot device. It's not a good plot device to keep recycling over and over and over. Had they taken a different approach with the robots, had they said that these robots were out for something, to try to create a different environment or something like that, then maybe that would have been better. That, that approach of this continual approach that they don't have the parts to make it to fix something, it is just it worked a couple of times, leave it leave it alone. Don't go there anymore. Um, so what I like about this episode, well I actually really, really like the new layout of the TARDIS. Subtle changes uh, to it involved the lighting. If you notice that the lighting rods inside the TARDIS time rotor are now a different colour, it's now warmer. Uh, it works well with the tones on the console, it works well with the tones of the environment. The redress with it being more of a library and more of a scientific workspace. It just uses the console room a little better. The, the, it's not just a wide open space now, it's, it's a, a working environment. They've really done well with that. I, th I think it, the TARDIS has never looked better. The, the whole console room really looks like a lived-in environment. So I really like that. Uh, the TARDIS lands in Sherwood Forest. Bear in mind that this, uh, this is not spoiler-free. Um, and then the Doctor is introduced to Robin Hood. He happens to be the first person that they come across. Lucky shot. Um, what to say about this? The first meeting between the Doctor and Robin Hood is a sword fight. And I, I, I got no problems with the sword fight, but the Doctor pulls out a spoon to sword fight Robin Hood. I, do you know, we're just when you think you understand the tone of a show, it flips it on its head and sometimes that's not a good thing. Sometimes seeing that tone change like that, it just takes you out of the episode. Uh, the Robin Hood in this story was very much the Arrow of Flynn Robin Hood. And I'm not sure that really worked with the story. They could have done something a little bit different. They didn't have to be so iconic with their version of Robin Hood. I'm not saying that it was wrong or anything like that. I'm just saying that audiences, modern audiences, a little more used to a little more ground based stuff and when you're dealing with a mythical character it's probably better to ground it in more of a reality than to try to play to the, the legend. So for me the Robin Hood was a little hit and miss and it was mainly miss I'm afraid. Again we go back to the sword fight and uh, the, the fight between the sword and the spoon. I didn't like it. I know they were trying to be, oh, this is just a little bit of fun, and this is just them, but think about it like this. 
The doctor believed that he was in a genuine sword fight with a genuine swordsman. You don't enter into that sort of circumstance and fight them with a spoon. Even if you're the most confident fighter in the world, you don't fight them with a spoon. It was ridiculous. Um, so I didn't like that at all. I just thought, you know, and some people might say, you know, they're just having fun. They're just having fun. Fine, have fun, but don't try to remove reality from it. You know, you're already removing reality from the show by making it about time travel and space travel in a police box, and you're already removing reality from it by trying to say a myth and a legend is a real person, and that these two fictional characters can cross over. There's, a, there's enough unreality there. Put something there that is going to level the ground, that is going to make us go right then. This this I can buy into. And fighting a trained swordsman with a spoon is not something I can buy into very easily. So I didn't I, I wasn't very keen on that. Something that I really did like in this episode was Ben Miller as the Sheriff of Nottingham. You take a comedy actor and you give him a dramatic role. And they, they say over and over and over that a comedy actor can do drama but a dramatic actor has trouble doing comedy and this episode really put another nail in that coffin because he really did do a bang up job. He was very very good in this part and I really appreciated the scene where Clara and the Sheriff are facing off. Very very good stuff going on there. Um, <clears throat> uh, like the reuse of locations uh, some people might recognise that the fact that they used Caffili Castle again as the grounds. Uh, their castle first appeared in the episode with the flesh, um, the gooby, fleshy people. Uh, I can't remember the name of the episode. For some reason, that the episode I've watched that episode like five or six times, and the episode's name will not stick in my brain. I don't know why. But good reuse of the grounds. Good visual effects as well, because obviously anybody who knows that castle will know that it doesn't look quite that pristine. So they, they did a real good job of making that the whole environment and location look really good. We begin onto the whole archery sequence. Now this part I felt was both applying itself to the legend of Robin Hood and taking you out of the story as well. It, in the whole splitting of the arrow thing I felt that, you know, that is part of the folklore of Robin Hood, that he took the arrow, split the arrow, and won the contest, so to speak, revealed himself as Robin Hood, but, you know, we'll, we'll get around this. And then we have the whole bit where the sheriff splits the arrow, the doctor splits the arrow, Robin Hood splits the arrow, and, uh, and it just get, becomes ridiculous again. It takes you, it bounces you straight out of the story. It, it takes you out of what's supposed to be a serious situation and puts it into a, a ridiculous spin on it. And I don't like that. I don't like it at all. Had it just been Robin Hood and the Sheriff and the Doctor was just watching to see what happens, maybe then I would look at it a little bit differently. But it, was, it bounced me so far out of the episode because it was saying that this is reality and then this is reality. No, no, this is the reality. No, no, this is the reality. It was, it was continually up and down on its levels. It, it, there was no, there was no continual, uh, continual universal level to what what we consider to be reality or nonsense. Um, very difficult to buy into. Very, like I said, continually bounced me out of the episode. So I, I, I wasn't keen on that. And here's my real problem with it was that because it kept bouncing me out of the episode, I realised that I actually find it more plausible that Charlie Sheen fired a chicken into a terrorist than I do believe in this whole sequence here. Because at least Topper Harley's character, or the Topper Harley character in Hot Shots, applied to the rules of that universe. This one, the, the rules of this universe just seem to change all, all the time. It was going from ridiculous to serious to ridiculous to serious. And I was doing it a little too much. Um, what else can I say? I, I mean, there was good banter between 
the Doctor and Robin. I, I felt that it was good that they went against each other rather than just be friends from the get-go and that they, they kept trying to one-up each other and the whole soiled himself scene was, I, I mean I, I laughed hard at that part where the Doctor says, did you? Oh, that's getting into character. I mean, I, I really, I mean, I, I was ridiculously buckled. Uh, what else can I say about the the episode? Well, there's not, there's, there really wasn't much going on. They applied the whole promised land thing to the robots again, which is just refreshing the audience's memory that there's a, this promised land place out there that we is going to apply further to another story further down the road. Okay. Uh, you know, they could have done more with this episode. They really could have done more with this episode. If Robin Hood hadn't been such a good guy to begin with, and hadn't been such clean cut, because I really have a problem with him looking so immaculate, and given that he's living in squalor and outside in a forest and in a cave and it, it's it, it to look that pristine to have an outfit that looks that well kept that well made they could have they could have run it down a little bit taken some of the polish off you know just made him look a little bit more worn not so you know a pristine beard and immaculate looking hair and and the doc does point out in the episode which makes it him wonder if he's a robot or not, but you know, again, add some believability to this. Stop trying to lean on the legend too much, and try to give us something that's a little bit more ground and pound that we can. That I believe it was Jerry Taylor that said when writing Star Trek: The Next Generation that you only ever ask your audience to believe one impossible thing. In this episode. It was impossibility after impossibility after impossibility, and there was a lot of it, just from start to finish. Um, so yeah, you know, Robin Hood defeats the sheriff, and the spaceship tries to take off. Now the whole plot of the spaceship taking off is that it needs gold content for some reason to power the engines so that the, the ship can take off. And it doesn't have enough, and it's going to explode. How do don't the robots know this? I mean, they man in the ship. They they obviously understand how the engines work because they're repairing the engines. They obviously understand how the ship works because they're using the ship. How don't they know that there's not enough? It, it, it that these robots who were fixing the ship didn't know how to fix it, and even if they didn't know how to fix it, or did know how to fix it, then they obviously weren't paying attention to what was going on. Does that sound like a robot? It didn't, it didn't do anything for me. That, But again, the whole robot thing in the Robin Hood story didn't do it for me either. I would have preferred them to go down a more magical route, maybe, because they, they've introduced magic into Doctor Who several times, and uh, dark magic and, and that, and I would have preferred that take on it. I didn't think that you you can't just put robots into a into a story and call it sci-fi. You you can't just beat out these notes and say, "Oh, right, this is sci-fi now." You know, it, this is this is actually this is actually the story of the Battle of Hastings, but we've put robots in there now, so it's now sci-fi. Doesn't work like that. It's sci-fi sci does not rely on you putting some unknown element into it to make a sci-fi. It, it, yeah, you can't just do that. I'm sorry, you, you can't. I didn't like it at all. Uh, the ship taking off and see sort of coming to the end of the story. The ship taking off it was going to explode unless it could get more gold content to power the engines. So they take a gold arrow and fire it into the engine. Not fire it into some sort of ignition thing or try to put it into uh, some sort of golden uh, superconductor or something like that. It, it literally just fired it and straight at the side of the engine. I don't care who you are or what science you're using, firing something at 
an engine, to damage the engine is not going to help it fly. If you took a jet engine and you poured petrol straight into the front of the engine, chances are it's going to go up in flames rather than actually help it power. So, I, I, I didn't like this story. I'm sorry. I, I'm trying my best to pull out all the things that I did like. I mean, I really liked Ben Miller as the Sheriff of Nottingham. I liked the banter between the Doctor and Robin Hood. I liked the production values. I liked the new layout of the TARDIS and the new look to it and they give us some really good angles inside the TARDIS so we can really see what it's what's going on. But for me this story fell flat and it didn't really contribute anything to anything. There was no real character development, there was no real building, there was no really further furthering the plot of what was going on but further back. And I, I like episodic stories, okay? I really like episodic stories. I will take an episodic show over a soap opera serial arc any day of the week. But when you're relying on a little bit of an arc, you you can't just glance over it. You can't just just go, okay, this doesn't matter now. You know, we we'll, we'll remind you, here's Oh, there it is. That's what we remind you of. And then back to the story. Because, the, to be honest with you, the story in this episode wasn't the Doctor's story. It wasn't the Doctor's. It wasn't Clara's. This was Robin Hood. And the Doctor just happened to be there. The Doctor didn't contribute anything to this episode. At all. Uh, Clara had some real good scenes with Ben Miller but again the problem was that we were getting bounced out of the episode every time it got deadly serious something ridiculous would happen and I'm sorry but for me this failed this this failed as an episode it would, they tried to make it fun but the fun became stupid and I'm gonna say for me, this was one of the worst episodes of Doctor Who I've ever seen. So how bad was this episode overall? Well, I can't... I can't buy into this episode. I have real trouble buying into this episode. So for me, th this episode was pretty bad. This episode was really... They tried, but they failed. And you can give them points for trying, and you can... So on and so forth, but... To me, this episode is worse than the Happiness Patrol, and for many people, the Happiness Patrol has been pretty much down there at the at the bottom of the stack. And for me, congratulations to the Happiness Patrol. I don't think you're there anymore. I can actually now buy into a giant robotic licorice all sort man who's gone psychotic than I can into this story. So congratulations to them. It's taken 25 years, but hey, you finally got there. Um, and that's been my review of Doctor Who. Hopefully next week with the darker tones and a more serious play, we'll get back to what it really should be and less of what we had. Anyway, that's my review. See you next week.